It's time for another upgrade. We selected this Luma 350 by Kodak uh, because it's very compact. It runs off of uh, low voltage. It has its own internal battery that can be recharged and used untethered for about two hours. This one seems to be just what we need. I think it's gonna work just great for the bean. Um, typically, we don't kick back and look at pictures and videos until the late evening. So with the curtains and all uh, lighting and the brightness of the device is not an issue. The broadcast size for the screen is relatively small. So I don't see a great need for uh, a super high resolution. Um, I've used it outdoors for a a theater with a 10 foot screen and it did a great job in uh, the late evening with low lighting so um, I think it's gonna work out just great it's super compact it has reasonable sound but I also have a Bluetooth um, speaker that this connects to and it does a fantastic job of sound reproduction so if we want that, uh, it's a simple matter of connecting the Bluetooth. These are the connections that the unit has. The other really nice feature is that it is a smart device for connecting directly to our phones um, with what's called screen mirror. So whatever is displayed on the phone screen will be broadcasted by the device. Um, there are also some smart apps that can be downloaded. It will get Netflix and YouTube and all those things. Uh, you have to have a network connection, a wireless connection. You can tether it to the phone. I've done that and it works just fine. Um, but for the screen mirror and those types of functions, there is no cellular connection required. This is the setup in uh, daylight with the curtains drawn and the doors closed. It's just a matter of creating a screen for that space there. The screen is going to be 50 inches, so we want to cut the bottom tube, this half inch pipe, to 52 inches give room for the end caps and projector screen to fit on that. We want the fabric to finish out to 29 by 50. This fabric does not fray, so I'm leaving no seam allowance for the sides. The fabric store edge isn't quite square, so I'm fixing that. I determined that I need three and five eighths inches to allow for the bottom seam to insert the bottom pipe. I need one and five eighths to allow for the seam of the upper rod. So I need a total of 34 and a quarter inches of fabric. Now I can mark the top seam for one and five eighths. Now I can fold this edge to the line and iron it. And this allowance was three and five eighths. I have the iron set to silk for this particular fabric. Now 
now the hem for the upper rod. Okay, the top hem is done. Now I'm going to mark the center of that. Fold it in half. There's the center. Now I want 27 and a half inches for the hanger placement. So that's 13 and three quarters either side of center. 13 and three quarter either side of center. And 13 and three quarter. Okay, the cutaway for the hanger should be about one half inch wide and one half inch deep. Okay, cut this for the hanger space. Now I just need to sew the cut threads to secure those in place. It looks like I need to cut this inch and a half PVC pipe to 53 inches to make a custom case. Okay, let's go try it out. Here's how the projector screen works. The aluminum rod slips over the two retractable coat hooks and it simply unrolls. And there you have it. I found a great little mount for this projector. It's fully adjustable locks into place and it's magnetic so I simply installed a metal disc onto the composite surface of our attic space. It's going to be hard to get off with one hand. Let me see here. There it is. Okay there's the mount and the metal disc. You may have noticed that the projector is mounted upside down. Um, one of the nice features of this particular projector is you can select the orientation in the menu so that you can mount it on the ceiling or, of course, um, set it on a tabletop. And it also corrects for uh, tilt angle. So no matter how the projector is angled, the image will remain a rectangle. This projector can be controlled three ways, um, using this remote or a phone app or the touch buttons on the surface of the projector itself. And switch the remote to mouse mode and that makes it more convenient to search the web. This is a five foot screen viewed at a distance of about five feet. It's the resolution and the brightness just after noon and the curtains are drawn but I think the uh, the brightness is pretty good there's actually three levels of brightness that you can choose from in the settings menu our favorite use of this projector is to share videos and photographs that we took during the day while we kick back in the evening Miracast or AirPlay for the iPhone will connect the phone directly to the projector wirelessly and display whatever's on the screen. You can zoom into photographs or pause videos and it will duplicate that on the screen. Dozens of movies and audio tracks can be saved on an SD card. The sound's not great, but what do you expect for a compact unit? This is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
no worries we have this great sounding compact bluetooth speaker and it connects directly to the projector and this is what it sounds like It's made for rough handling and outdoor use. It's 100% waterproof. In fact, it floats. Here's a better example of the sound quality from this small speaker using a MP3 file. The system works pretty well outside in the evening if it's not too windy. I just have it setting on the fender using this compact folding tripod. The projector runs and recharges off of 15 volts, so I installed a converter and a common vehicle power port and a switch, which turns on the converters and runs the projector. We have the output voltage set to 13.5. It's going into a 12 volt regulated output to a 12 volt input and 15 volt output for our projector. So no matter how much the voltage here fluctuates, we're down to 12.9, we still have 15, and go up to say 14.5, we're still at 15. First thing we need to do is empty the attic space and then remove this false floor paneling. These lift up and then slide over, then pull out. This cabinet space is a good example of Bean's excellent design and construction. You can pause this if you want. There's a switch. There's the ground and the lithium battery coming into the system. It goes through this converter. 12 volts comes out here. Goes into this converter. And 15 volts comes out here. And this connects to our auxiliary socket. To run the projector. <sighs> okay, there's plenty of room in the attic space for the wiring, and now I'm just gonna do a final check before plugging in. That's it, 15 volts. <laughs> 